Hi friends, thanks for coming to Story Today. We have a book called, you may have seen this before, When I Woke Up, I Was a Hippopotamus by Tom McRae and the pictures are by Ross Collins. Here's a hippo in a bed wearing pajamas. I think this bed is a little bit small for this hippo. Wait a minute, hippos don't usually sleep in beds. Hmm. I'm a little confused. What could be happening in this story? Not only that, but when I look at the end pages, I see lots of other characters here. I see sharks, spaceships, spiders, ghosts, skeletons, dinosaurs. There are bats, submarines, a space person, a knight, a tree, a giant. There's the hippo. There's the robot, a statue, a monkey, and a monster. Those things are not connected, are they? Hmm, I don't know why there are all those pictures here. When I woke up, I was a hippopotamus. Here's the title page, and it's actually a human kid with a lot of toys on the floor. Is he the one talking? When he wakes up, he'll be a hippopotamus? When I woke up, I was a hippopotamus. Yawning in the morning, I raised up my sleepy head, then took one look out the window and got straight back into bed. Hmm. Is this hippo this boy turned into a hippo? The toys look similar. The blankets look similar. Maybe some different colors though. Hmm. I don't know what's happening. Get up, said mom, or you'll be late. But hippos in their sludge don't get up in the morning. And so I didn't budge. If you're a hippo, you don't budge out of your sludge. Do you know what sludge is? like mud. Wait a minute. Now something else has happened. At breakfast, I was a robot. My tummy wasn't hungry. I wasn't programmed how to eat. My mouth was made of metal, like my nose and knees and feet. Quick, quick, said Dad. Come on, eat up. We've really got to scoot. But robots can't eat cornflakes. Dad's words did not compute. So the robot is saying, I don't understand those words. I am a robot. And Dad is trying to give the robot some toast. Will toast with jam fit into this narrow robot mouth? The robot is spilling some juice, spilling some cereal, grabbing the cat be really hard to have a robot at your breakfast table. I don't think I would like it. So mommy wanted the hippo to get out of bed and the hippo would not cooperate. Daddy wanted the robot to eat breakfast but the robot would not cooperate. And now when it was time to go to school I was a statue. I couldn't move a muscle. I couldn't blink an eye. I couldn't lift a finger. I couldn't breathe a sigh. <sighs> Mom pushed, then pulled. Dad pulled, then pushed. They heaved with all their might, but my legs were made of granite and my feet were stuck down tight. Granite is a type of rock. And so he's saying, well, they wanted me to go to school but I couldn't move because I was a statue and that also made me very heavy. I wonder how mom and dad are feeling now. They tried to get their boy out of bed. They tried to get their boy to eat breakfast. They tried to get their boy to go to school. Hmm. Oh, look at this. When I got to school, I was a monkey. A cheeky little monkey 
thought a table was a tree. I had to climb upon it just to see what I could see. I couldn't sit and listen, and my work was rather slack. That means he wasn't working very hard. Then the teacher scolded me and made me sit in back. When he gets scolded, that means he was in trouble with the teacher. When she was scolding him, she was saying words like, Don't you do that. You can't be a monkey right now. He was climbing on the tables. Look at the kids. Some of the kids are thinking it's funny. And some of the kids look like they're saying, Uh-oh. Maybe some of the kids know inside them that this is not a good idea to make the teacher upset. Oh, dear. When it was playtime, so he's still at school, but now they're outside. I was a monster. A scritchy, scratchy monster with 10 scritchy, scratchy claws. I had 50 scritchy, scratchy teeth in my scritchy, scratchy jaws. The girls all screamed, the boys all ran, my mouth went munchy crunch. Then the teacher scolded me again, so I ate her for my lunch. Did that really happen? He's saying, well, when I was in trouble with the teacher, I didn't really like that, and so I just ate her up since I was a monster. Oh my goodness, he's making some people upset with these games, isn't he? When it was time to go home, I was a rocket ship. I zoomed up out of orbit. Countdown, five, four, three, two, one. I was nearly reaching light speed. Poor old dad, he had to run. Dad is trying to chase. This is how fast he's going. Cars are getting knocked down. My pistons pumped, my jetpacks jumped, all full of super fuel. I had to get to planet home, far from planet school. I think he's racing ahead of his daddy to get home fast. My grown-ups always wanted me to stay with them when we were outside in the world. I wonder how that dad is feeling. Oh, then when I got home in my bedroom, I was a giant. My hands were huge as houses. My beard was big and blue. I was hunting for a human to put in my human stew. I was crashing around my bedroom. Well, that's just how giants play. We're big and loud and noisy. We don't know another way. I think he's being rough with all of his things in his room. But mom and dad weren't happy. And they yelled out, keep it down. But my giant feet were busy as they crushed a tiny town. That's it, cried mom and dad. You're louder than ten boys. And they stomped upstairs to scold me for making so much noise. Here's dad banging on the ceiling with a broomstick. There are the giant's feet, breaking everything upstairs. Oh, uh-oh, I think this little boy is really in trouble now. Look what happened. When mom and dad came in, they were dragons. They snarled and growled and stamped and howled and nearly broke the door. Their wings caught in the curtains and their tails scratched on the floor. Dad blew a giant smoke ring with an angry rumbling cough. Mom wagged a scaly finger until I thought it might fall off. This must be the daddy dragon wearing the glasses because his daddy was wearing glasses. And here's the mommy and she has, looks like she has nail polish on and a little hair barrette. I think his parents are really frustrated. I stared up at my mom and dad and I didn't feel so brave. I was having fun pretending. I didn't mean to misbehave. 
of all the wondrous things, said Mom, that you pretend to be. Why can't you be a nice thing? And so I pretended that I was me. Oh, we had a lovely evening. I helped my dad with tea. Then I read my mom a story as I sat upon her knee. At bath time, we played pirates and we plotted pirate schemes. And then I snuggled in my blanket and dreamed amazing dreams. These are all the characters from the story. And he realized, hey, I can just think about those as I'm falling asleep. Maybe I'll dream about them. The monster, the giant, the robot, the dragon, the hippo, the monkey. He's wearing a little pirate outfit and he has a sword and he's riding on the rocket. They're blasting off from Earth. This boy really has a great imagination, doesn't he? He can actually see all of these things in his mind. Here are the same end pages. Sometimes in a book, the end pages at the beginning and the end are the same. And here are a lot of things that you may have seen in the story. Right? Well, I'm really glad that in the end, this little boy decided to be helpful to his parents instead of only coming up with his own ideas because his own ideas were making things really hard for his mom and dad, right? It's so fun to pretend, but sometimes if you're making other people upset, you might have to be flexible about your idea and change the game, right? Well, I like this story. It's pretty funny. And I'm glad you're here today with me. And we'll read another story another time. I'll see you soon. Bye.